Hello and welcome to my channel. Today is a plant update video where I give you all the amazing updates that I'm really, really excited about. So let's get started. First, as always, I'm going to start with my Easter cactus. And in the spring, after this really cold weather is gone, I will show you how to repot these and get them to produce more leaves and more Easter cactuses. But all this guy is doing right now is just growing leaves, which is what you want to see with an Easter cactus. You're really not expecting many buds from Easter cactus because they Easter either before, during, or after Easter. So that's when those guys are going to go. But the Christmas cactuses are starting to bloom now. They either bloom before, during, or after Christmas. It really just depends on the, on the cactus. So as you can see, this guy is growing so much. Get my camera focused. There we go. You can see that one is growing so much. And then we got this one who is also growing. There we go. And then we got a few on these leaves as well if I get to work with me as you can see those are growing into blooms as well so so far I have three guaranteed bloom buns that are happening right now and this guy's gonna be the first one to bloom which is so exciting because what I do every single night if it gets a below 60, if it gets bound 65 or below, I will put them by this back door when I go to bed every night. And every morning, I bring them back up and I put them on their little trays here. Because as you can see, they have holes at the bottom, which they are supposed to have. So I have these clay trays right here that will soak up the water. So that's what I have them on. All of my Christmas cactuses are on those because they have holes in the bottom. So here is my other Christmas cactus who is not showing any signs of possible buds right now. Which is to be expected. This one's kind of small. So smaller ones, um, I'm not expecting one, any buds on, but the bigger one I'm really excited about. And in the spring, I will definitely we pop these guys into bigger pots very, very soon in the spring. There's like possible buds on this guy, but really no definitive if it's gonna be a bud or it's gonna be a leaf. You can't know if it's gonna be either until it grows a little bit more and starts to take shape, either of a bud or of a leaf. That's really the only way you know for sure. So now I move on to my baby aloe right here. And when we go outside, I'll show you how the mother aloe plant is doing in this really, really cold weather and how her babies are holding up. But everything looks good for this guy. It's a little bit warmer in here than it is outside. Cause like outside it's like 60s. And in here it's about 65. I do that mostly for my orchids, but yeah, we'll get to my orchids in just a second. But this, Aloe is doing really, really well. There's no signs of distress. If there were signs of distress, you would see lots of the leaves starting to fall and wither away. So that's how you can tell when the aloe is in distress. And that guy is not in distress. It just has like a little edge of a leaf dying off and that's totally normal and natural for that to happen. But if you are prone to burning yourself like I have been in the past, you definitely want to have one inside, especially if you're trying to have a healing method that's all natural. An aloe plant is the best way to go. Um, I would suggest if you're going to do it that way, you have one inside and then you have one outside. In case something happens to the one inside, lots of things can happen when it comes inside. That way you have extras outside and if you, have, if you just plant one outside, expect it to produce about 12 babies a year, which is insane but that's what they do. So now we're gonna move on to my orchids, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, and I also have another orchid coming really, really soon. And once it arrives, it will be on the first plant update video as soon as possible. And it will definitely be on my vlogs. So if you 
don't subscribe to my vlogging channel that's probably one reason to subscribe because then you'll see all the up-to-date packages and stuff that come in for all my videos basically so here is I believe the flower spike that's growing right there which is very very amazing everything's growing quite nice the roots are growing the leaves are growing and the flower spikes doing quite well which is amazing which is what I want to see I want to see it growing nice and steady and for your Phalaenopsis orchids, at least, you want the flower spike to be growing directly in the sunlight. You want to face the flower spikes as same positions towards the sunlight as much as possible so that you have as straight as possible flower spikes. You don't have like a little curvy one if you don't want a curvy one. Um, to me, it just doesn't really matter to me at this point. It's like it's going to be what it's going to be. That's just the way I feel about it. But if you want it to, to be as straight as possible, I would suggest you have it pointing in the same direction during the sunlight the entire time. So when you fertilize them and put them back, try to put them in the almost in the exact position they were before you took them out to fertilize them. And we'll get all to the fertilizing method, all the fertilizers that I use and everything that I use for my plants. So we have this orchid who has this nice leaf growing. It has this flower spike coming out and the roots are doing amazing. There's really no, nothing new on my orchids. It's just my Christmas crutches are like growing like crazy and I love it. But my orchids are doing quite well. There's no signs of distress on the orchids at all. So then we got this guy right here who is growing this leaf right here nice and steady. On the back it's a little dark. That's because the flowers are a dark color. That's the only reason you should see dark coloring on the back of the leaves is if your plant has dark flowers, which most of mine do. Um, most of mine are like a dark purple because purple is my favorite color, but those are ones I usually gravitate to. But I do have a couple that are either pink or white. I do have a couple like that. And then I have one, I don't know what color it was because I bought it when it didn't have flowers on it. So. There's that. So next is this big guy who is growing this beautiful, large flower spike. And then we have this nice little leaf growing and it's nice and green on the bottom of the leaf, which tells me it's a light color flower. So if it's a nice green color, it means it's not a dark color flower, it's a light color flower, like a pink or, or a white, something that range. I don't know if this is the one I bought that had no flowers on it, so I don't know what color it is. But you usually can tell on the bottom of the leaf if it's going to be a dark color flower or if it's going to be a light color flower. On the back of the leaves, if it's a dark color on the back of the leaves, it is a dark color flower. If it's a nice green color on the back of the leaf, then it is a light color flower. That's usually where you can tell what color, if you're going to get a dark color or a light color, but not the color specific. And here is my little baby orchid, because this is the smallest one of the bunch. It's not growing any flower spikes at this point. It's not growing any leaves. It's just growing its roots and continue to grow them as much as possible. So everything is looking good with this guy. And again, this guy has shades of darkness around the leaves. So it's probably a dark color as well. But we won't know for sure until they start producing buds and they boom. And Zach wanted to make an appearance. He wanted to make an appearance in this video. So then we got this orchid right here who is growing these roots right here. And then we got a possible flower spike, I believe it's going to be a flower spike. But we'll have to wait and see what happens with it. But everything is doing well. The roots are doing well. Everything is just doing well today. So now we are going to go outside. I'm going to try not to freeze to death. <laughs> When I go outside to show you all the amazing updates outside the mother aloe plant and her babies, how the poncetta is doing, and how uh, my rose bush is doing as well. And I'll see you guys in just a second. Here we are with all the beautiful aloe plants right here, all of her babies growing steadily. Still the same amount of babies, but she is growing quite well. She has fully recovered from the tree damage we had a few months back. But everything is looking good. Everybody is growing. It's looking amazing. Here is my poncetta. As you can see, it's lost a few leaves. 
Um, I don't know exactly what happened, if it's just dying off or what, but there should be beautiful red leaves and flowers growing at this point, but for mine it said, no, I'm not going to do that today. This is my beautiful rose bush, as you can see lots and lots of leaves growing right now, everything is looking good. So hopefully we will have some buds in the near future to show you guys, hopefully. Sometimes roses say, I will grow today, and other days they say, nope, I'm not going to grow any buds today. Okay guys, we are back inside, and Zach's being noisy, and he missed me because I've been gone for a minute, maybe. Um, but we are back inside, where it's nice and a little bit warmer for me. So now I'm going to show you all the fertilizers that I use for all of my plants. So we're going to start with my rose bush. I use miracle Grow. Um, fertilizer from most of my plants. No, they're not sponsoring this video, but I love their products that much that I would show them if they were sponsoring me or not. But I do use this for my roses. I do that every two weeks. I do all these fertilizers actually every two weeks in some water and I just pour it into them and they're loving it. So then I have another Miracle Grow fertilizer that I use for my Easter cactuses, my Christmas cactuses, my aloe plants, my poncetta. Those are the ones I use this for. And now for my orchids. Ooh, here we go for my orchids. So this is the one that I use for my orchids that are growing leaves and growing roots, ones that are not in flower specs just yet. So this is the one I use for that. And then for the ones that are growing flower spikes and growing buds, I use this one for all of those. And again, all the links to all of these fertilizers will be in the description below in case you would like to check them out and buy one for yourself. And I never ever would suggest products to you guys that I don't use myself or that I don't love to use. And this is another thing that I really, really love to use for my orchids, especially if you need to know the temperature by your plants and you need to know the humidity by your plants and that was Zach playing of course is this little guy right here it has a thermometer on one side and it has the humidity level on the other side and I just keep it right there in front of my orchids so I know the temperature around them so they're not getting too cold and I know how much humidity is around them so I can keep it pretty pretty well so the humidity for Phenolestis plants indoors is around 41 to 42 humidity level and it's way above that right now. But everything's looking good and that is going to be it for this week's plant update. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it, share to grow our community, and subscribe if you're new here. I do these videos every single Tuesday and hit that bell so you're always notified when I put out new videos and I'll see you guys next time.